religious orders and TV or radio station. Wherever you are, welcome. We extend a very special welcome to our official partner radio station and television stations of Catholic Television, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks in the U.S., Shalom TV India, EWTN Television, Salt and Light TV, Art Madashan TV, Uganda Catholic TV. You will find more information and details of today's uh, celebration on our website, vaticannews.va. And you can see on your screens there the picture of Maria, Blessed Maria Antonia of St. Joseph, uh, also known as Mama Antulam. She is often depicted wearing a religious habit, but actually she was a, a lay woman, a consecrated lay woman. And we are here today, the sixth Sunday of In Ordinary Time, and Pope Francis will soon uh, preside over the canonization of Argentina's first female saint, Blessed Maria Antonia of St. Joseph, also known as Mama Antulam. The canonization ceremony taking place here in St. Peter's Basilica is attended by several representatives of the Catholic Church from Argentina, as well as political leaders, including Javier Millet, the president of Argentina. Also present for the canonization ceremony are the three bishops, three bishops from Argentina, uh, the Archbishop Jorge Inacio Garcia Cueva of Buenos Aires, the Auxiliary Bishop of La Plata, as well as Argentina's Bishop of San Diego, Santiago del Estero. Many other Argentinian priests, sisters, lay persons, and religious students based here in Italy are also in attendance. Silvia Correale is the postulator for the cause of the new saint, Blessed Maria Antonia of St. Joseph. Actually, the canonization begins right at the beginning of the Mass, and um, we will see um, the Cardinal in charge of the dicastery for the causes of saints come before the Holy Father to ask him to begin the canonization. He will be accompanied by the postulator. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pax Bovis. Veni Creator Spiritus, come Spirit, come Creator Spirit.
invoking the Holy Spirit there, come Creator Spirit. And now the canonization begins, Cardinal Marcello Smeraro, Prefect of the Dicastery for the Causes of Saints, of Saints accompanied by the postulator, will ask uh, the Holy Father to canonize Maria Antonio of St. Joseph. Most Holy Father, Mother Church car earnestly beseeches Your Holiness to enroll Blessed Maria Antonia of St. Joseph among the saints that she may be invoked as such by all the Christian faithful. That of Blessed Maria Antonia of St. Joseph turns out to be the first cause of beatification promoted in Argentina, where she was born, lived, and worked, and where her motto remains still uh, preserved in the Basilica of Our Lady of Mercy in Buenos Aires. She is popularly called by the name of Mama Antula. Born in the province of Tucumán in 1730, she joined a group of girls and women then known as the Blessed, who assisted the Jesuit fathers in the apostolate of the spiritual exercises and in their works of charity. She was then 15 years old, and yet she particularly distinguished herself in helping and giving alms to the poor. After the suppression of the Society of Jesus, she was inspired to pursue the promotion of Ignatian spirituality, especially the practice of the spiritual exercises. As a consecrated lay woman, Mama Antula made this purpose the heart of her vocation and mission. She undertook several missionary journeys on foot and in absolute poverty, and where she arrived, she gathered people for times of meditation and prayer. In 1779, she arrived in Buenos Aires. Her faith in God and the abundance of good fruit as a result of her work convinced the bishop and the city authorities to support her apostolate. In those years, tens of thousands of potentials, lay people, clerics, poor people, and prominent personalities all undertook the spiritual exercises organized by, Ma, by Mama Antula. In the process, they testified to reaping abundant benefits. In 1785, Mama Antula requested and obtained from the Holy See special indulgences for those who participated in the spiritual exercises that she promoted. She also opened in Buenos Aires a home for girls and the women known as the Blessed. They shared her activities and shared in the spiritual ideals of St. Ignatius. For two years, she moved to Uruguay, promoting the spiritual exercises and giving courses in Colonia San Sacramento and Montevideo. Before she died, she was able to realize one of her lifelong desires to erect a house for the spiritual exercises in Buenos Aires, in which she continued to give guidance up until the end of her life. She welcomed people from all walks of life. She died in 7th March, 1799. The fame of sanctity which she enjoyed during her lifetime and at the time of her death endured even afterwards and was un increasingly enriched by a number of signs attributed to her intercession. The people always remembered and still remember her life of extraordinary virtues, her amazing witness of faith and charity her evangelical resilience, and just her heroic exercise of all virtues. Having initiated the cause for her beatification at the beginning of the 20th century and completed all the required canonical processes, Maria Antonia of St. Joseph was proclaimed blessed in Santiago de Restero on 27th August 2016. On the 24th October, Your Holiness, you authorize the dicastery for the cause of saints to promulgate the decree regarding the second miracle attributed to the blessed intercession. Finally, after written consultation with the College of Cardinals, Your Holiness set the date for today, 
It's canonization. So a brief uh, biography, a big, a brief um, biography of the of Blessed Maria of Saint Maria Antonia of Saint Joseph, being read by Cardinal Marcello Meraro. Uh, he is the prefect in charge of the dicastery for the causes of saints here in the Vatican. Dear brothers and sisters. Let us lift up our prayers to God, the Father Almighty, through Jesus Christ, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, he may sustain this grace, the act which we now solemnly undertake. And now I'm um, interceding through the litany of saints.
So the angel is there, and uh, very soon the Holy Father will pronounce the formula for canonization. We ask you, Lord, graciously to co-opt the prayers of your people that our devoted service may be pleasing to you and contribute to the growth of the church through Christ our Lord. And now we prepare for the formula for canonization. For the honor of the Blessed Trinity, the exaltation of the Catholic faith, and the increase of the Christian life by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ and of the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul and our own after due deliberation and frequent prayer for divine assistance and having sought the counsel of many of our brother bishops, we declare and define Blessed Maria Antonia of St. Joseph to be saint, and we enroll her among the saints, decreeing that she be venerated as such by the whole church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There we are, Saint Maria Antonia of Saint Joseph, the first female Argentinian saint, but of course when one becomes blessed or a saint, they become a saint of the Universal Church. A very happy occasion indeed, as I said at the beginning of our broadcast, when the, saint, when the church proclaims a new saint, it is indeed a very happy occasion uh, for, the saint, for the church. The church rejoices to proclaim a new saints. What we are seeing there is a procession of um, flowers and the candles that will be placed at the, relic, at the relics um, of the new saints. The congregation, of course, showing its um, joy and appreciation for this new sense by declaring Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. So that's where the relics of the new saints are, the reliquary, and they will place the flowers and the candles there. So you are seeing uh, from the screens uh, Cardinal Smeraro again with the postulator Silvia Correale. They are going to the Holy Father and they are going to express their thanks to the Holy Father, their appreciation for having declared, for having canonized Saint Maria Antonia of Saint Joseph. Most Holy Father, in the name of the Holy Church, I thank your Holiness for making this proclamation and humbly request that you decree that 
the apostolic letter concerning the act of canonization be drawn up. We saw decree. So the apostolic letter concerning the act of canonization that it has taken place will be drawn up. Uh, Cardinal Zmeraro, Marcello Zmeraro, accompanied by Silvia Correale, she was the postulator for the cause for the canonization of our saint today. Worked hard with a lot of other people, of course, uh, to promote uh, the canonization. And now the Gloria. The glory are there, uh, maintaining our joy. Let us pray. Deus, o God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns and unity with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. As we go into the liturgy of the word, um, 275 priests and bishops con celebrating at this mass, and 5,500 in the basilica. The first reading. From Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scalp or pussel blotch, which will appears to be the sore of leprosy, 
she shall be brought to Aaron and, uh, and the leprosy and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the soul of his, of his head. This one bears the soul of lepros, and he shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle the beard. He shall cry unclean, unclean, as long as the soul is on him. He shall declare himself unclean since he is unclean, and he shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Sei tu il mio rifugio, mi liberi dall'angoscia. Fatto conoscere il mio peccato, non ho coperto la mia colpa. Ho detto: confesserò al Signore le mie iniquità, e tu hai tolto la mia colpa e il mio peccato. Rallegratevi nel Signore, et esultate, o giusti, voi tutti retti di cuore, gridate di gioia. Psalm, Psalm 32, our response to the first reading, our responsorial psalm. And now the second reading. From the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or to the Church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. And now the gospel acclamation.
the gospel is from the sixth Sunday in ordinary time. Dominus vobiscum. Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundum Marcum. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Just in case you're joining us, this is the Eucharistic celebration for the canonization of Saint Maria Antonia of Joseph. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do will, I do will it, be made clean. The leprous left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sincerely, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer your cleansing with what Moses prescribed. That will be proof to them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter the town openly. He remained outside in deserted places and people coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. That was the gospel read uh, in Latin. The same gospel is going to be read in Greek. Sophia Orthia Customento Agio Evangelio. Irene Passi. Ectu cata Marcon aegio evangeliu tu anagnosma. Προσευτών λεπρό παρακαλών αυτών και γονιτών και λέγω αυτό. Ότε αν θέλει, δύνασε με καθαρίσε. Και σπλαχνιστή εκτείνα στην χείρα αυτού. Ήψατε και λέγει. Αυτό θέλω καθαρίστητη και ευθύς απήλθεν απ' αυτού η λέπρα και καθαρίστη και εμβριμισάμενος αυτό ευθύς εξέβαλεν αυτόν και λέγει αυτό Ora mi deni mi deni pis, ala pagese afton dexion toniri ke prosene ke peri tu katharisi musu a prosetaxen moisis is martyrion aftis. O dex elthon irixato 
πυρήσιν πολλά και διφήμιζεν τον λόγον, ως τη μικέτη αυτών δύναστε φανέρος η πόλην εις ελθήν. Αλέξω επί ερήμης το πισήν. Και ήρχοντον προς Αυτόν πάντοθε That was the same gospel that we read earlier on in uh, Latin, the gospel of St. Mark from the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. We did say that um, a very big delegation from Argentina, led by the country's president and two ministers, is also accompanied by his sister, Karina, and uh, many other Argentinians uh, from Argentina who have come in to witness uh, the canonization of the first female Argentinian saint, a saint of the church. And now we listen to the homily of the Holy Father. In the first reading of the Gospel, speaks of leprosy, a disease that involves the progressive physical deterioration of the person and which tragically, even today, in some places, causes people to be treated as outcasts. Leprosy and ostracization. These are the ills from which Jesus wanted to liberate the man whom he encounters in the gospel. Let us take a look at his situation. The leper was forced to live outside the city, weakened by his illness. Rather than being helped by his fellow citizens, he finds himself forsaken and indeed further wounded by his ostracism and rejection. Why? First, because of fear, fear of catching the disease and meeting the same end. God forbid that it happens also to us. Let us not take risks. Let us keep a distance. Fear. This then prejudice. It has if he has this terrible illness, people thought, surely it is because God is punishing him for something, some sin that he committed. So he deserves it after all. Prejudice. And finally, because of false religiosity. In those days, it was thought that touching a dead person made one ritually impure, and lepers were considered the walking dead. It was thought that even a slight contact with them made one impure. A case of distorted religiosity, one that erects barriers and barriers Pitying. Fear, prejudice, and false religiosity, these are the three causes of great injustice. Brothers and sisters, let us not think these are only relics of the past. How many suffering men and women do we meet on the sidewalks of our city? How much fear, prejudice, and inconsistencies, even among those who are believers and call themselves Christians, they contribute to wounding them all the more. In our time, too, there are striking cases of ostracism. Barriers need to be torn down, forms of leprosy to be cured. But how? What does Jesus do? He does two things. He touches and he heals. The first touching, he touches the man. 
Jesus responds to the cry of help. He feels compassion and he stops. He reaches out and he touches him. Knowing fully well that in doing so, he will in turn become a pariah. Oddly enough, the roles now reverse. Once healed, the sick person will be able to the, to the priest and be readmitted into the community. Jesus, on the other hand, will no longer be able to enter any town. The Lord could have avoided touching this man. It would have been enough to perform a distance healing. Yet that is not the way of Jesus Christ. His way is that of love that draws near to those who suffer, enters into contact with them and touches their wounds. Our God, dear brothers and sisters, does not remain distant. Jesus is near. He comes near. Dear brothers and sisters, God did not remain distant in heaven, but in Jesus, he became man in order to touch our poverty and before the world case of leprosy, which is sin, he did not hesitate to die on the cross outside the walls of the city, rejected like a sinner, in order to touch the depths of our human reality. A saint wrote once, he made himself a leper for our sake. Are we who love and follow Jesus capable of imitating his touch? That is not easy to do. And we must be on guard lest our hearts harbor instincts contrary to his attitude of drawing near and being a gift to others. For example, we will withdraw from others and think only of ourselves when we reduce the world around us to the limits of our own comfort zone, when we believe that the problem is always with other people. In such cases, we need to be attentive because the diagnosis is clear, leprosy of the soul, a sickness that blinds us to love and compassion, one that destroys us by the cankers of selfishness and prejudice, indifference and intolerance. Let us also be attentive, brothers and sisters, since as with the first signs of leprosy that are prayers on the skin, if we do not intervene immediately, the infection will grow and become devastating. In front of this, of these possibilities, in this sickness of the animal of, of the soul, what is the cure? Here we are helped by the second thing that Jesus does. He touches, he heals. His touch is not only a sign of closeness, but also the beginning of the process of healing. Once closeness is God's style, God is always near, compassionate, and tender closeness, compassionate, and tenderness. This is the style of God. And we must let ourselves be touched by him in prayer. And if we allow ourselves to be touched in him by him in prayer and adoration, if we permit him to act through his word and his sacraments, that contact changes us. It heals us of sin, sets us free from our self-absorption and transfers us beyond anything we could possibly achieve by ourselves and our own. Our wounds, our sicknesses of the soul need to be brought to Jesus. Prayer accomplishes this. Not prayer is an abstract and repetitive set of formulas but a heartfelt living prayer that places at the feet of Christ our miseries, 
our frailties and our failings and also our fears, we bring to Christ all of those. Let us think. Let us ask. Do I allow Jesus to touch my leprosies in order to heal me? At the touch of Jesus, the very best of ourselves is born anew. The tissues of heart regenerate, the blood of our creative impulses are charged with love, they begin once more to flow, and the wound of our past mistakes heal, and the skin of our relationships become fresh and healthy. The beauty that we possess, the beauty that we are, is restored thanks to the love of Christ. We rediscover the joy of giving ourselves to others without fear and prejudices, leaving behind dull and disembodied religiosity, and experience a renewed ability to love others in a generous and dis in a disinterested way. As one of a magnificent page of scripture tells us, from what appeared to be a, vo a valley of dry bones, living bodies rise up, and the community of brothers and sisters is reborn and saved. Yet it would be illusory to think that this miracle takes place in grandiose and spectacular ways. It happens most often in the hidden charity practiced each day in our families, at work, in the parish, in the schools, and in the streets, in our offices and stores. A charity that does not seek publicity and does not need of applause, since love is sufficient unto itself. Jesus makes clear today when he orders the man now healed to say nothing to anyone, closeness and discretion. Brothers and sisters, that is love God, that is how God loves us, and if we allow ourselves to be touched by Him, we too, with the power of His Spirit, will be able to become witnesses of His saving love. This is the lesson we are taught by St. Maria Antonia of Joseph, who was known as Mama Antula, touched by Jesus thanks to the spiritual exercises and living amid great material and moral poverty, she devoted herself completely amid countless difficulties to enabling many others to share the same experiences. She got thousands of people involved and founded works of charity that are flourishing even today. With a peace of heart, she went about armed with great wonder, with great wooden cross. Touched and healed by God, with a peaceful heart, she went about armed with a great wooden cross and image of Our Lady of Sorrows. Yes. She called, she called him the child Jesus Manuel Dete. She proclaimed Jesus tirelessly through her whole life, for she was convinced that she loved, as she loved, patience is good, but perseverance is better. May the example and her intercession help us to grow according to the heart of God in charity, and may God bless us all. Those of us watching from your screen, you can see a picture of um, a drawing, uh, a, a painting rather, of Saint Maria Antonia of Saint Joseph. Though depicted um, wearing habits, she was actually a lay consecrated woman. And Pope Francis in his homily reminding us that fear, prejudices, and false religiosity are the three causes of great injustices in the world. Jesus heals us of our sins, sets us from our self-absorption, and transforms us beyond anything we could possibly achieve by ourselves or by our efforts. 
in our daily lives miracles still happen but more often most often they are hidden away uh, and they do not come with much applause reminding us for francis to also imitate saint maria antonia of saint joseph by her, her life her simple life always being there for others just in case you are joining us this is the live broadcast of the canonization mass of saint maria antonia of saint joseph coming to you live from the basilica of saint peter here in the vatican and now we recite the creed
fratelli e sorelle, brothers and sisters, in the intercession of Saint Maria Antonia, we raise our supplication to God, the Provident Father, that He may guide the Holy Church and grant our desires of restless humanity for peace. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for God's people. O God, the hope that does not disappoint, let your face shine in the lives of the baptized so that the good fragrance of Christ the Savior may spread everywhere. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Pope Francis and all pastors of the church. May the Lord, who is gracious to all, grant Pope Francis and all the pastors of the church to live in to live in their ministry the compassion of Christ toward all who suffer in body and spirit. Let us pray for countries in the Middle East. O God, love our peace, inspire our rulers with the wisdom of dialogue and the will to cooperate for the common good, overcoming what divides and seeking what unites. Let us pray for those who work for the good of their neighbors. O oh God, friend of the humble and lowly, raise up men and women who will generously dedicate themselves to assist their neighbor and grant to all people an increase in the spirit of solidarity and fraternal charity. Let us pray for ourselves as partakers of the sacred ministries. God, source of all holiness, grant us to draw from the Eucharistic celebration the courage to imitate the saints who dedicated their lives to the service of Christ and our brothers and sisters. Exhaust, O oh Father, our supplication and following the example of St. Maria Antonia, grant us to grow in a spiritual life that is free from worldly logic, but faithful in practice to the evangelical virtues that conform us to Christ your Son, who is the Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And now we go into the offertory, this part of the Eucharist, uh, of the offertory where we bring our bread and wine to be consecrated on this very special day for the canonization, when, on, which, uh, on this day when um, Saint Maria Antonia of Saint Joseph was canonized in this very colorful uh, ceremony within the Basilica of St. Peter's, 275 priests, bishops, cardinals con celebrating, very high delegation from Argentina, led by the president of Argentina, his sister, a uh, couple of ministers there, as well as the governor from the 
from the city where the saint was born. That is Santiago del Estero in Argentina. We did say there are 275 priests, cardinals, bishops celebrating, but apart from that, there are more than 5,500 5, uh, people in the Basilica. Uh, in Argentina itself, when we started the Mass here at 9, uh, it was early in the morning there, uh, about 5.30, because of the time zones and the differences in times. Uh, actually, I'm told that... Um, in Argentina, they had a vigil all night waiting for this Mass, and now they are joined with us as we celebrate the canonization of Argentina's first female saint, who, of course, is a saint uh, for the Church. Speaking to the press earlier this week, the Archbishop of Argentina actually spoke about how bold uh, this saint was known locally as Mama Antula. Uh, she lived in the 18th century and uh, when the order of the Jesuits was suppressed, she, we could say that she kept alive their legacy by continuing with the Ignatian teaching and living the spiritual exercises of Saint Ignatius. And as Pope Francis said uh, the other day, 
not all the Jesuits were exactly enthused by that, and some of her opposed that. But you know, saints are always living um, contra current, so she she still went ahead, and she gained a lot of support from many ordinary people, the aristocracy, and even the bishop of the time. They all supported her, and to this day, her legacy continues. Uh, the spiritual exercises house con uh, is still there and there are people who cherish the memory. She is known as the mother of the nation. Curate fratres, to me um acabestrum sacrificium. Cardinals Meraro at the altar, pray brethren that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable. May the oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. And now the preface. Veredignum et iustum est, ecum et salutare, nos divi semper et ubique gratia sagere, Domine, Sante Pater, Omnipotens et Deus, per Christum Dominum nostrum, cuius For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he, was, he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And with the angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. If you have with you a missal, a Sunday missal, um, the next, the following prayers will be taken from the third Eucharistic prayer, so you can follow using your missal. Third Eucharistic prayer. El merito de lauda omnis ate condira creatura, qua per filium tuum dominum nostrum Iesum Christum, Spiritus Sancti operante virtute, vivificas e santificas universa, et populum tibi congregare non denis, uta soli sortus quod occasum oblatio munda offeratur nomini tuo. Supplicergo te, Domine de Precamur, ut ec munera que tibi sacranda de tulibus, e od spiritu sanctificare dignelis, ut corpus, re sanguis fiant, 
Filho de Domini nosso Jesus Cristo, cujos mandato e que mistério celebramos. E se em mim, quando te trabalho, acevi te panem, e te bi graças a gens benedicit, fregit, deditque, discípuli suis, dicens, acevi te, te manducate ex hoc omnes, hoc est enim corpus meum, quod provobis tradetur. Se mi rimodo posso quam c'è na tu mest, a ci piens calicem, e ti bi grazia saggia se benedixi, te di quei discipoli suis dicens, a ci vide bibite ex e omnes, e che estenimi calix e sanguinis mei novi et eterni testamenti, qui provobis et promultis e fundetur, in remissione in peccatorum, hoc facite in mea ma commemorazionem. Misterium Fidei Memore sigitur Domine, e iusda infilitui salutifere passionis, ec non mirabilis e resculezionis, et ascensionis in celum, sedet e prestorantes alterum e iso alventum, offerimus tibi, gratias referentes, hoc sacrificium vivum et sanctum. Respice quesumus, in oblazionem ecclesia tue, et agnons est hostiam, cus voluisti immolazione placari, concede, do cui corpore ed è sangue ne filitu e reficimu, spirito e il santo repleti, un un corpus, et un spiritus inveniamur in Cristo. Ipse nos tibis perfeciat munus aeternum, ut cum electis tuis, ereditatem consequi valiamus, in primis cum beatissima Virgine, dei genitrice Maria, cum beato Iosef, Iesus Ponso, cum beates apostolis tuis, et gloriosis martiribus, cum Santa Maria Antonia e Santo Iosef, et onibus santix, quorum intercessione, perpetu dapur te confiditum audivari. Che costia nostra reconciliazionis proficiat, quesimus Domine, a tutius mundi pacim atque salutem, ecclesiam tuam peregrinantem in terra, in fede et caritate firmare dineris, cum famulo tuo Papa, nostro Francisco, cum episcopari ordini et universo clero et omni populo acquisitionis tue. Votis cui familie, quantibi a stare voluisti, ad esto propicius, omnes filios tuos ubique dispersos, tibi clemens pater miseratus coniunge, fratres nostros defuntos, et omnis qui tebi placentes, ex hoc seculo transierunt in renium tuum benignus, admite, ubi fore speramus, ut similis gloria in tue pereniter satiemur, per Christum Dominum nostrum, per quem mundo bona cum talargiris. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, Estivi Deo Patria Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritu Sancti, omnis honor et glorie, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen.
so we just have been praying the third Eucharistic prayer there and during the Eucharistic prayer you also saw so celebrating the Archbishop of Buenos Aires Monsignor Jorge Ignacio Garcia Cuerva and I'm actually told that in this mass um, the man who was miraculously cured by an intercession of Saint Maria Antonia of Saint Joseph is within ma this mass he suffered a stroke and through the intercession of Saint Maria Antonia made a full recovery Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distresses. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now invited to share this sign of peace with all who are here or wherever you are, you can make a sign of peace. This uh, special mass, the canonization of Saint Maria Antonia. As the choir leads us in Lamb of God. Ecce agnus dei, ecce qui tollit peccata mundi, beati qui ad acena magni vocati sunt. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. It's Holy Communion time. Uh, those of us who are watching and listening and following obviously cannot partake of Holy Communion, but uh, we can always receive spiritual communion by praying in our hearts. The Lord always comes to our hearts. We are celebrating a very special saint. Maria Antonia of St. Joseph. She is also the founder of the Spiritual House of Exercises in Buenos Aires. 
um, from where she conducted retreats and spread Jesuit spirituality, of the, especially the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. An amazing fact about this lady, she literally went around Argentine, Argentina many times walking astonishingly long distance, says. She was a woman on the move, always preaching as she went around Argentina and popularizing the spiritual exercises, but not just popularizing them, but actually living them. Earlier on, uh, we saw the Archbishop of Buenos Aires um, during the Eucharistic prayer there. But uh, during the week, he told journalists about how he was touched by the boldness and the apostolic creativity of Maria Antonia Joseph of St. Joseph, known also as Mama Antula in the local Quechua language. She lived in the 18th century, as we said, and uh, he pointed out that Mama Antula did not make distinctions among people, literally welcoming everyone in her social circles and at her center, the House of Spiritual Exercises, members of Buenos Aires aristocracy mixed with simple families.
as communion is, is still taking place in some parts of the basilica it's been a wonderful celebration that is slowly beginning to wind towards close celebrating this special saint saint maria antonia of saint joseph a new saint that will continue will intercede for us The postulator Sylvia Correale there also shared in the week. Uh, she is the one that has been following the cause of Mama Antula's canonization. And she spoke about the saint's enduring influence right up to this day. So it is no surprise that uh, though she lived in the 18th century, uh, here we are today remembering this great woman and all her works of charity and her tireless journeys across Argentina and uh, Pope Francis also in the week uh, reminding us as well as in his homily today reminding us that we can take a leaf and um, imitate uh, this extraordinary wim woman uh, in the biography that Cardinal Zemeraro read at the beginning of the canonization also he spoke of her extraordinary virtues. Let us pray. Amen. The closing prayer, prayer after communion. Having been fed upon heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for the food of heaven which we truly live. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And now the blessing. Amen. Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. The deacon intoning there in Latin. Thanks be to God. The congregation responds. There you have it. The canonization mass. But before we go. The Salve Regina, Hail Holy Queen. That's just about all we had for you, this special live broadcast of the canonization of the first female Argentina and saint, Saint Maria Antonia of Saint Joseph, also known as Mama Antula, in the Vatican's Basilica of Saint Peter. It has been a joyful celebration. My name is Father Paul Samasumo. Thank you for joining us on this special broadcast. And a quick word of thanks to our official partners, Salt and Light TV, EWTN Television, at Madashan TV, Catholic TV, Uganda Catholic Television. Um, if you can, please join us shortly at midday for the Pope's Angelus. Praise be Jesus Christ, Laudetu Jesus Christus.
O my Jesus, I beg you on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of your spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to you, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. You yourself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of your mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of your mercy